everyone sorry i'm just putting my face cream on today things might get a little bit ranty and i'm sorry if it gets a bit ranty but it's a topic that makes me a little bit ranty so i'm sorry about that but i think everyone by now has probably seen eden the dolls instagram story of her and her friends out in hollywood getting attacked goes without saying that it made me sad watching it oh because it's vile and it shouldn't happen even now in fucking 2020 we're still here trans women are still being attacked out in the street on nights out whatever it's still such a big issue and i know i know like it's not my job to save the world or save the beauty community or, or you know i know that's not my job but if something upsets me then i'm allowed to speak about it right also me as part of the lgbt plus community myself it's something that i see a lot like even if you look at something like the drag race fandom where you'll get like white cis gay men being like aggressive when people say that trans women should be allowed to compete on drag race and things like that i mean i know they have had like a couple of trans contestants on there but that was only after a lot of pressure from like the public that rupaul put those people on sorry i'm hunting around for my little elf primer now oh there it is um but you see it all the time you know people online getting aggressive about oh well you know drag race is is for men who dress up as women or whatever they've all got that same point of view and it's either the cis gay men with that point of view or some i've seen some like straight women with that point of view as well and it's dated it's very very dated but then trans women can't even fucking enjoy a night out without being attacked so why are we still here in fucking 2020 It is disgusting. I'm going to put a bit of the footage of Eden the Dolls IG story in here just in case you haven't seen that. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. I'm at 10%. I'm at 10% right now. Why are you guys Why are y'all just sitting here recording? No, they, they, the police are family. There's nothing. What else do you guys want to do? You better use your muscles, you got nigga. Come on, let's go. Let's go. 
So you saw what was going on there. Someone stole her purse, first of all, phone. Then it got violent. One of them's on the ground, being beaten up, on the ground crying. People are just walking past as if nothing's fucking happened. 2020, this is our world, right? And I know people might be thinking like, oh, well, why the fuck are you speaking on it? What's it got to do with you? And yeah, okay, their case might have nothing to do with me, but, you know, I'm a queer person who has dated people who are transitioning and things, and I've seen some of the struggles that trans people go through. A long time ago, I was with a man, trans man, and it wasn't accepted here, but I saw some of the struggles that he went through, like things like having to detransition for a new passport photo and how uncomfortable that made him. All of this stuff, I saw all this stuff like at the weekly group meetings, um, we'd go to like a support group and you'd hear everybody's stories in the support group and stuff like that, which of course is confidential, so, you know, but you'd hear everybody's stories and you'd hear all the shit that had happened to them. And when you're in a relationship with someone who's trans and you love that person, but the rest of the world fucking hates them, you're just like, you know, you feel like you just want to protect them. Also think if you're a queer person, it should affect you seeing shit happening to trans people. You know, that's part of your community. And it should upset you, it should make you angry. Because if that was you or one of your other queer friends on the ground after being attacked, I'm sure you'd want people to speak out and stick up for you. But when it comes to trans people, a lot of people just don't give a shit. And it's not right. But that's why I've come on here, just sit and play with some makeup. I'm just playing around with some P. Louise base and some eyeshadow right now. Just, you know, it's very sad to think we're still in a place where trans people still go through so much shit. And even like, I've said it before, you guys know I identify as non-binary myself. So some people put non-binary under the trans umbrella because it's not like in the binary, you know, people do consider it trans. Me, I'm happy not identifying as a gender at all. I just say non-binary queer because that's easiest for me. Like if you have to put a label on me, that's what I say, non-binary queer. And even I've had incidents where I've been out, like in drag, and people mistake me for a trans woman. I've had it a few times, like, where I've been mistaken for a trans woman and the things that have happened when I've been mistaken for a trans woman, I've been groped, sexually assaulted, in clubs. I've had a man in the street throwing beer cans at me. Like, I was on my way to a Pride event And this guy, pissed up football fan, drunk, you know, he starts shouting at me from across the road, tranny, tranny, like that. 
And I'm like, oh, fuck off, whatever, you know. Then he starts throwing his beer cans at me. And I'm like, oh, fucking men, you know. But, you know, this is the world. If you look a little bit different, if you are a little bit different, if you don't fit in, then you get fucking bullied. And on that note, like, about gender as well, Beauty Bay posted the Jeffree Star Orgy palette. Said, oh, yeah, we're going to get this in stock, whatever. I've got the tweet here. I'll pop it in. And, of course, people started kicking off because the name's controversial and the shade names are controversial and all of that you know um and you can see if you go and look at that tweet you can see under there there are people saying like oh by jeffrey putting gender fluid in as a shade he's like sexualizing and fetishizing gender fluid people which i think is really stupid because to me i don't see it as sexualizing or fetishizing gender fluid people I see it as visibility for gender fluid or non-binary people you know rather than seeing it as a negative thing for me personally just my opinion but I see it as a positive positive. and speaking of bashing the Jeffree Star palette Luscious Mesca and Joella Pussy are at it again they made a video together I don't know if you saw it it was the two of them together I think they called it something like the girls want a battle pod but I've got a little clip that I'm going to pop in here where they were talking about the whole Jeffree Star, Jackie Ina candle thing. Bird honey, she when she when she checks the candle, she she breathes it from the top. She's a professional. All of a sudden, candle she girl. has the wick trimmer now. She said I ordered 20 more candles, guys. She just posted she posted more she bought more candles. Do you feel like he sabotage was trying to sabotage Jackie Ina? I think so. And you know that's so sad. That's because so the petty. girls want to call me shady and they say No, that I really uh, it's the okay. How many times has Jeffrey uh advertised for candles? Never. I've never seen it. Girl. I've never seen she it. She don't advertise nobody. She don't help nobody. She's never she talked don't about uplift candles. nobody. But all of a She's sudden, only in it for herself, I feel my opinion. All of a sudden, they had like Luscious and Joella Pussy both trying to say, Oh, Jeffree Star doesn't lift anyone up, Jeffree Star doesn't help anyone, all of this. When that isn't really true because Jeffree Star does help some people, you know, not to be like the Jeffree Star Defense League over here, but you know, what they're saying isn't true, yeah. But what they're saying, it's not really true because Jeffrey has promoted a black trans woman who has her own business on his YouTube channel. So what they're saying isn't even like true. They're just sitting on on their podcast chatting about it, looking like a couple of goddamn fuckers. Because of course I'm beautiful. Yeah, I wish. Ended up going with the Deceased Liquid Lip and the Scorpio Liner, that one. Um, that's the liner on there. And that is the lip. This is like one of my favourite nudes. As you can see, I don't have the Scorpio lipstick, but these two go together quite well. And then my other favourite nudes that I like, I have got... Mannequin this one. This is lovely. I like this on me for like an everyday nude Do a bit of that one there. Sorry swatches are gonna be a bit messy So that one there is mannequin Then you've got this one the Nathan one which is a bit more like terracotta color But this is also really pretty on me. I love this color There you go. So that one there is the Nathan one and my other favourite nude is Posh Spice. This one is gorgeous. It's like a greyish nude. I like this colour a lot. There you are. So that's that one down there. So when they dry down, matte like this. They're lovely. Really nice. I love this Posh Spice one at the moment. Okay, so I think I'm just going to add some gloss to this. And then I think that is going to be the finished look. 
I kind of like the hair without anything in it today, I think. Right. Oh, get that little straggler. One of these. Kind of just want to do a bit of this bluey one in the centre and see how that looks like. Oh, okay. Not mad at it. Aren't these lashes amazing? These are the ones I got from that brand, um, Sour Candy. The new guy from Liverpool who's just started his own little cosmetics company. Okay, so I think that is going to be the finished look and I'm going to leave this video here. Remember, being cisgender is a privilege and take care of yourself, stay safe, stay well. Love you so much. Thank you for watching if you've made it this far. See you on the next one. Bye guys.